Good morning. We welcome all in attendance in the cathedral and everyone who's watching the live stream of this Mass. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant for today's liturgy is Father Jay. At this Mass, we especially remember Claudia Grant. Please remember in prayer those who are sick, Louise Gambato, Mary Lynch, Alison Henry, and those who have died, Isabel Giordano, Antti Brannigan, Dorothy D'Amato, and Lisa Mendoza. Please take a minute to distribute the worship aids to those around you. They can be found in your pews and they look like this. And our entrance hymn can be found on the second page of that worship aid. Oh, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, today on this third Sunday of Easter, um, we're giving another account of Jesus' disciples and apostles um, struggling with doubt and with faith. And so it's okay to have doubt and faith because the Lord you know, comes to our presence and he says to us, peace be with you. And so at this mass, let us acknowledge that he is with us and that he wants us to come forward to the altar uh, free from sin and, from, and to, have mer his, to experience his mercy and his love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. People exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over 
and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I'm writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus had, was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our Gospel for this third Sunday of Easter, um, we're hearing another account of the risen Christ appearing before his disciples. Last week, we heard about Thomas and his doubt, unless I see the hands and his side, the wounds, I will not believe. These accounts, they teach us a lot on the nature of faith, doubt, but also what happens when one has a personal encounter with the risen Christ. The apostles, the first disciples of Jesus, those who got to see the person of Jesus in action experienced doubt, struggled with their faith. Why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? These disciples, they're dealing with the crucifixion, death, and burial of Jesus. Sometimes we can think that these disciples are nothing like us because we call them saints like they've always had it all figured out, but they didn't because they're human beings too. They experienced grief, they were confused, they experienced doubt, but Jesus appears in their midst. And when Jesus appears, it can be startling as if they saw a ghost, but at the same time, it can be comforting. Peace be with you. Jesus meets his disciples where they are, in their present circumstance of doubt. He even eats with them. Have you anything here to eat? And so in the same way, he meets you and I in our present circumstance because he understands our human nature and our need for evidence and validation. And he provides it so that he can invite us to believe and to trust in him. We're invited this Sunday to reflect on the many different ways that the risen Christ has appeared to us in the daily happenings of daily life. In whatever circumstance or situation we find ourselves in, are you and I even receptive to how he appears to us today? Do we believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist? Do we see him in our friends, our families, in our neighbor? 
And when we're able to see Christ in all these places in our lives, when we have that personal and intimate encounter with Jesus Christ, sharing a meal together here at this Mass, Jesus empowers us and commissions us to be witnesses. You are witnesses of these things. This commission, this sharing, and the mission of Jesus Christ, it's not just for the disciples 2,000 years ago, but it's for all those who follow him. Are you and I following him today and each and every day? As baptized Christians, we are called to be witnesses of his resurrection, to share the good news of salvation, that he died and he rose from the dead so that all of us may be forgiven of our sins. And he invites us to a relationship with him. We can experience, we can encounter him, we can be witnesses of Jesus by our word, by the way that we live out our lives in the service of God and of each other. Our gospel today challenges us to deepen our faith, to confront our doubts, and to live as authentic witnesses of Jesus. How is Jesus challenging you and I today? This morning, you've probably noticed the projector and the screen. Um, it's the Bishop's Annual Appeal Weekend. And you know one of the ways that we can support the mission of Christ is by supporting the appeal. It's supporting his church, the work of the local church, the Diocese of Metuchen. You know, all of the work of the diocese would not be possible with the support, without the support of so many generous people. You know, I probably said this um, a few times in the past before, but I was someone, I am someone that the Peel has supported because it supports seminarians, future priests of the diocese, and possibly future priests of this parish. You know, I wouldn't be here today without the gener generosity of so many people. And, you know, you get to experience the fruits of the appeal. You know, I hope in a good way. You know, I try to be mindful of what you've done for me so that I can give myself back you know, through the service of the parish, the school, and, you know, any, everything else, you know, in the surrounding of the diocese. And so um, I'm going to um, invite uh, Seminary John to put on the video for us. Thank you for taking a few moments today to listen to this video about the road to Emmaus and about our Bishop's Annual Appeal. Jesus had just died, just been crucified. They lost their hope, they were disappointed, and they were heading away from the other disciples, going to Emmaus. Along the way, they encounter this man who starts speaking to them, asking what's taking place. So they couldn't believe he didn't know. And he listened patiently to them, and then he started to explain why the things that happened did, why the Messiah had to suffer and die. And as they were walking with him and listening to his compassionate voice, they begged him to stay, and he did. He stayed with them at Emmaus. So after he had explained the scriptures and why the Messiah had to die, he sat down with them at table, and in the breaking of the bread, it dawned on them. This was Jesus, this was the risen Lord, and then he went away. The disciples though, recognizing Jesus and nourished by him in the Eucharist, run back to Jerusalem to the other disciples to share the good news. 
This Emmaus story is our story. We too, at times in our life, can get frustrated and we too can get confused and lose faith. Imagine if when Jesus arrived, started walking with those two apostles, if he started correcting them. What are you doing? You're doing the wrong thing. But he didn't. He was compassionate and he listened to them first, led them on the right path. That's what we're asked to do too as Jesus' disciples today, 2,000 years later. We're asked to accompany those in need. And that's what the Bishop's Appeal does. It accompanies so many in need. There's so many ministries, as you know, that are assisted by the Bishop's Appeal. Maybe first and foremost, we think about all those helped by Catholic charities, all those who are suffering and in need. You know, we have so many people who come to us for help, and it's only grown in recent years. So the need is enormous. So I ask you to be generous in helping us to respond to these people that come for help. These are things that we can't do alone, huh, in our own parishes, but things that we need to group together and do as a Dawson church, as a local church. Our pastoral initiatives, helping especially our children and youth and young adults, and so many different ministries and catechesis, accompanying our college students at the Catholic Student Center at St. Peter's University Parish, working with our youth at our high schools. I think of the many people who need our help, those who are in prison and need the assistance, the nourishment and encouragement to help get on the right path from our priests who visit our prisons and our other ministers that accompany them. The people in our hospitals, obviously, huh? Our chaplains at our hospitals and the teams, the legion of people who help them. They all need our support. They need our support at this moment in their need as they're sick and facing these great challenges in their lives. Our seminarians, of course, you know it's so dear to my heart. We're blessed with 21 seminarians, which is so wonderful, uh, but it's also expensive, huh? You know what college education costs. We also have to make sure they have health insurance and can get around. So your help's very much needed in supporting our 21 shepherds so that we have priests who can continue to make Jesus present to us through the breaking opening of scripture at mass, through the sharing of the Eucharist at Sunday mass and daily mass for those who are able to attend that. It's so important that we have enough shepherds for our parishes. So I thank you for your support of our seminarians and for praying for more vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life in our diocese. You know, too, the work of evangelization is so important in our day, and our social communications are so important in helping to meet people where they are today. That's all sponsored by the diocese, too. These are things that we can't do alone, but things that we need to group together and do as a local church. Our pastoral initiatives, our Office of Human Life and Dignity is supported by the Appeal, too, and you know how important that work is in these days, huh? Supporting life in all of its stages, from conception to natural death. Uh, the, the life is under attack in so many ways, fortunately, in our state, in our country. The work of the diocese helps all of us together to be able to work for, to respect and build up a culture of life uh, that respects everyone, the unborn, those who are dying and ill, and all those stages in between where people need our help in so many ways. The needs are many, but I know I can count on you. I always have been able to, and so I thank you. I ask you to reach deeper if you're able this year to help. Let's be nourished by our Lord to the scriptures and the Eucharist, asking him to stay with us. Stay with us and help us when we have doubts or when we need that extra help in our faith, but also renewed in mission that we go out to reach out to those who need Jesus. Another thing we've done this year is we've set up a separate foundation for the Bishop's Appeal, which means these funds are sequestered in a separate trust. And there's some priests and lay people on the board, and every dollar is used to support the ministries in the Bishop's Appeal. Nothing else. Even the administrative cost of the Bishop's Appeal is paid for in a different way. And the money that's donated goes all to outreach to those in need. So God bless you, you know, my love and prayers and gratitude for you. And uh, I'm, I'm counting on you as I do always, huh, to join in this effort. If everyone gave something, it goes such a long way and helps build us up. If every household can make a gift, whatever you're able, to support this great work, uh, I'd be so grateful and I know our Lord would too as we strive to build his kingdom here in our, our beautiful four counties of this diocese of Metuchen that I know I'm blessed to be a part of. We ask the Lord to bless you and your loved ones and all those who come to us in need. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Thanks, Father Jay, for introducing the appeal video for us. And we always have the opportunity each year to 
respond to our bishops' uh, invitation to support the work that our individual parishes cannot, our 90 parishes. Um, so please um, be thoughtful and generous. Some of you, many of you probably have already given to the appeal and we're so grateful uh, for your support. Um, but there is much work to be done, and there's many ways in which uh, our church needs to be present in the world today, <clears throat> especially with um, so many complex problems that we deal with. So at the end of your pews, there are, um, there are cards that you can pass down, please, and so that you might have an opportunity to respond today if you've not done so. And there's a way that you could fill it out, and so that on the back of the card, there's a way to do so with credit card or with a QR code. And then if you would be so kind as to drop it into the collection um, as it's the collections taken up today. And we'll make sure that all of these get taken uh, to our diocesan offices. Again, thanks for your, for your patience, for your understanding for this, um, and for your prayers. Um, Bishop is always uh, speaking about how he prays for us, and he's always going about the diocese encouraging us to be faithful, to attend our masses, and to be um, engaged in our, in, in our faith. And so let's take the opportunity as we, um, as we support him financially, let's take the opportunity to support him with our prayers uh, as well. So we'll just take a few minutes uh, or a few moments of silence and uh, uh, you can pray or you can fill these out. But thanks so much uh, for, for hearing our message on this today. Let's now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
as we continue to celebrate the resurrection, we are confident that Christ intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. With faith in his love, we make our prayers in his name. For our holy shepherds, that they may always have the courage to confront sin in God's people as Peter did, and call them to repentance with compassionate understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus may open the hearts of world leaders to keep his commandments, leading us into the paths of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocesan church, that our people will show their support for its services, programs, and ministries by participating in the bishop's annual appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in pain of body or soul, especially our loved ones and those who have asked our prayers, that God may relieve their distress and put gladness into their hearts again. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed loved ones, and especially for Claudia Grant, that Jesus may stand before them with this radiant greeting of peace and welcome them to the dwelling he has prepared for them in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you raise Jesus from death to life. Open our ears and our hearts so that we may know and do your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our tithing offering will be taken at this time. Thank you for your continuous support and generosity. number 526 in the hymnal. Be joyful, Mary, number 526. <laughs>
sisters on my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Praise and glory to the name, power and glory of all of this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending, unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For I 
those who celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, bond the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Santa Te Domino. Alleluia. Santa Te Domino. Benedici te nomen eius. Bene, nun si ate, de die in
Let us now invite the Lord, our Eucharistic Lord, to, to increase our faith, to erase any doubts, and to strengthen us as we continue our journey of faith towards eternal redemption. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil foe, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you to praise you with all your saints forever and ever. Amen. O sacred banquet in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed. The mind is filled with grace and a pledge of future glory is given to us. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Just two announcements. Um, next Saturday, um, April 20th, the diocese will have a, um, a multicultural mass and fair um, here at 10 a.m. Um, next Saturday. Um, and this will all take place here, the mass, and then the fair will take place downstairs in our community room. And lastly, um, next Sunday, April 21st, um, we are hosting our first annual Women's Inspirational Brunch. Um, and this is um, for all women and girls in sixth grade and up. And we're going, um, our speaker will be Leah Darrow. Um, I was able to um, hear her speak um, last year and she has a really uh, powerful message. You know, that, um, you know, there's so many things that is attracting us to this world, money, fame, you know, all these different things. But, um, and, and she talks about in her, in her life on how she gave that all up for her faith and how, she, how those things, you know, of society are telling us is good, is actually, um, you know, was actually kind of bad and um, it, was, it was taking her away from the faith, from, from Christ. And so if you know anybody, any women, any sixth grade girls and up um, who might need kind of um, words of inspiration, um, please invite them and share um, the flyer that is in our bulletin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our closing hymn is number 539 in the hymnal. Sing with all the saints in glory, number 539. Verses 1 and 4. <laughs> 